Welcome to this Bayes' Theorem lecture. Oh, here's a little overview of what we're going to talk about. Um, what is Bayes' Theorem? What does it do? When am I going to use it? And when should I use it? What are the components of it? And how am I going to use it to solve problems? These are all the things we're going to cover in this lecture. So, here we go. What does it do? So basically, Bayes' theorem it takes in all the information from the pedigree, the family history, the current children, takes all that information, uh, wraps it up, and it, what it does, it gives you more accurate probability. So you can determine, usually its carrier status is what you're looking for. So when do you use it? Well, when you want a more accurate information, more accurate probability, and when you have that information. All right, so there are four components to Bayes' theorem. The prior, the conditional, joint, and the posterior. And what I'll do is I'll kind of explain these as we go along through a uh, practice problem here with example one. So example one, woman uh, Roman numeral two, two, wants to know the probability that she is a carrier for muscular dystrophy. So that's our person right there. We want to know her probability that she's a carrier. So before we even get into this, um, you know, looking at the pedigree and things, we want to know, we want to use the information that's already given to us in the question, which is what disease is it? So get out of here, pedigree. We want to know the disease and its muscular dystrophy. and Specifically, what we want to think about the disease, since this is genetics, is how is it inherited, and it's X-linked recessive. So anytime you get one of these problems, you want to know the inheritance, or it's not going to do you any good. You'll be off on the wrong start. So example one, now that we have that in our background, now we can look at the pedigree, come back in here, and what information does this give us? So, well, we have an affected maternal uncle, unaffected brother, mother's a carrier, and we have three unaffected children. So this is our basic pedigree information. Now we can start doing our prior and look at our Bayes' theorem. So here we go. Prior. This is basically what is our chance of being a carrier given the prior family history. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we know the mother was a carrier. She has an affected brother. So this is X-linked recessive, so her chance of being a carrier is just 50% based on family history. So this is our table. This is what we're going to use for every question for the rest of time. So looking at it, here's our prior. We want to know if the patient is a carrier, what are the prob what's the probability? So it's one half. And if she is not a carrier, the probability is one half, given the prior history, her ancestral history. So now, looking back at our pedigree, what else do we see here? Well, we see, boom, she has three healthy children, healthy males who do not have muscular dystrophy. So that leads us to our next component, which is the conditional. And this is the most difficult one to understand. So we'll kind of go through it slowly and make sure it's nice and clear. So conditional is basically any extra information the problem provides. Um, so usually that means the offspring. And we it's important to know what question we're answering with conditional because it's almost like a side problem from our main problem. So conditional, the question we're answering in this case is what is the probability that she has three unaffected boys? Okay, remember that question. That's what we're trying to answer here. And if she is a carrier, we're going to calculate what is the probability that she has three unaffected boys if she's a carrier and if she's not a carrier. So first the carrier. We're going to assume she's a carrier. Again, we're doing this question first, all right? So, we assume she's a carrier. What is the probability that she has one unaffected boy? So what we're doing here, 
I can make it easy, right? We're, she has three unaffected boys. Let's just start easy. With the probability that she has one unaffected boy, if she is a carrier, is what? One half. She either passes the gene on, because it's X-linked recessive, she either gives that boy that the X chromosome that has the defective gene, or she doesn't. 50%. Now, what if she does this, she has one unaffected boy, and then she has another unaffected boy, and then another unaffected boy. So when you see the AND, this is your uh, cue to multiply. So we take the, our probability and we just multiply it again and again, and we end up with one eighth. So going back to our table, conditional, one eighth done. So now we want to calculate if she is not a carrier. So looking back at our pedigree, because this can kind of get a little confusing. So if she is not a carrier, she does not have the affected gene, how is she going to pass the disease to the males? And the answer is she's not. If she's not a carrier, she's not going to pass it on. Now some of you might be asking, well what about mutations, blah blah blah, those, how do we factor those in? Stop whining. We'll get to it. Okay, so if she is not a carrier, what is the probability that she has one unaffected boy? Well it's one. She's just sending it down. The probability that she has one unaffected boy and another and another again we, and we multiply so we get one 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 it's equal to one and then if there's mutations you would subtract that and you can that's illustrated here by the mu but in the case of muscular dystrophy the mutation rate is so small that we can just assume it's zero because we are only estimating probability and just say it's one. Alright, so now we go back to our table and we have one. And I want to kind of pause here to illustrate what Bayes' theorem is actually doing. Um, we can see here, you know, in the prior with just family history, we could say it's a 50 50 chance. Now that we have this extra information that she's already had these kids, we can use it to further calculate a more accurate probability. And you can see with the conditional, now her chances of being a carrier goes fr from one half to one eighth, which is to be expected if she has three healthy boys. So on to our next one. This is the joint. And basically, you join the probability of prior and conditional by multiplying. So here's our prior and conditional. We multiply. 1 half times 1 eighth is 1 sixteenth. 1 half times 1 is 1 half. So she's a carrier. Here's just the calculations written out. 1 half, 1 eighth. She's not a carrier. Boom. All right, posterior. Posterior is an awkward word, um, and it kind of makes things confusing. So for our purposes, just think of it as afterwards or final. After we've done all our calculation, this is her probability. Her final probability is this. So the equation for a posterior is easy to remember: joint over joint times joint, and you know, with all those joints in the equation, you might even say posterior is blazing. Yeah, yeah, we like to have a good time here. All right, so for the carrier, your joint is joint carrier divided by a joint times joint, and it's not carrier, same thing. So what does that look like? Get here to our posterior. So we have 1 16th, our joint of carrier, 
divided by our joint of carrier times joint of not carrier, and we get one ninth. And we do the same thing if you're not a carrier, and that's what we get. So, back to our original question. We want to know the probability that this woman has muscular dystrophy, and our answer is one ninth. So, just to wrap up a few key points, Bayes' theorem takes into account all the information, more than just the ancestral history. Um, always draw a table when you're doing these problems, it will make life easier. The prior probability is your ancestral history and your conditional is any additional history that you might have. Joint and posterior are just mathematical equations. So, a few limitations of this lecture. We only covered one type of inheritance and it was a pretty straightforward problem. So the best thing to do is do practice problems and that's how you really get the hang of this. Alright.